In this example, we're going to give you an overview of the clip art files that are included with Aspire. We're going to show you where the files are located, some of the special features that some of the files we've included have incorporated within them, and then we're going to give you a quick guide of how to import and load the files into the software. Now Aspire comes with over 650 different individual designs and many of these come in multiple styles or variants, all of which can be loaded into the software and used in different ways as we'll show you shortly. In total there are over 1400 files included on the Aspire disk. And the files can be accessed from the DVD itself, or as you'll see when you install the software there's an option for you also to install the clip art files which will copy them from the DVD and put them on the hard drive of your PC which just makes it easier to access. And when you do that the files will be located either in the documents folder if you're running Windows 7 or 8 or in older versions of Windows you'll find them in my documents. And so you can see here that this is a Windows 7 PC. Now under libraries we have documents here. So if I just click in there, you can see that we have a folder called Vectric Files. And so if we go in there, we can see that when I installed the software, I also chose to install the clip art, the documentation, and the tutorial files. And again, if you haven't chosen to install these on the hard drive, then you will be able to find these files on the installation disk. And before we go into the clip art folder, I just want to show you something within the documentation folder. So in here, you can see we've got a PDF Aspire 8 clip art guide. So if I just double click this, and so this is pretty much a written version of this tutorial, and it'll give you some information about the files that are included on the disk and would certainly make a useful reference. I'm just going to go into view, I'm just going to go to page display and just make that a two page view. So here if I choose the page down option, you can see that we've got an overview, we've got the guide to the file names, and then we've got a guide to the folders. So this shows you how our clip art is divided up. And if we just keep going down, you can see that we go into the catalogue and we can see the 2D vectors, the animals, and so on. And so we're just seeing all of the individual pieces. We can see that there is a lot of clip art in here for you to choose from when working with the software. And I'll demonstrate some of these file types throughout this video here. Now this document can also be found on the website and downloaded even before you purchase the software so that you can see it and reference it. It's also very useful for you to print out so that you've got a document that you can have to hand. Sometimes it's a bit easier to browse things when they've been printed off. So let's just go and close that down. So let's go back to the Vectric Files folder and then we're going to go into the Clip Art folder. And so we can see all the folders that we were just looking at there in the document. And if we just go through, we can see some of those files. And so the main file types that you'll find in the clip art is purely a 3D file. And so that has either a .3D clip extension or it has a .v3m file extension. And those files can be imported into all sessions of Aspire to use as a piece of clip art. Some of them contain a single 3D component and some of them contain a group of 3D components. And we'll come to look at those in a moment. If we just go back, you can see that there is a 2D vector folder in here and this contains files that only have 2D information in them. And if we go in here, we can see that these have been saved in .crv format. So they can be opened or imported into VCarve or Aspire. Let's just go back there. And there are other folders in here that also contain 2D information. For example, the panels and the shields and the weaves. Now if I go into the weaves, what we've done is we've included a CRV 3D file for each um, piece of clip art. For example, if we take a look at Weave 1, you can see that we have Weave 1 1, we have Weave 1 2, and we also have Weave 1 3. And then we have the Weave 1 CRV 3D file. 
Now each of these 3D clip files um, is the same weave except they all have a different cross section. So what we've done is we've included the CLV 3D file which shows the vectors that we used. I'll just make that a little bit bigger, you might be able to see that a little bit better. So you can see the vectors that we've used here uh, along with the three vector cross sections and so it's useful for you in that you can see how this was created and so it will help you with the learning of the weave process. Now any of these files can be imported into our session but if we wanted to we could just grab the CLV3D file and just drag that into our session I just minimize that and we can see the vectors there. If I go to this layers uh, drop down menu here you can see that we have the different cross sections that we've got there and you can see that we also have different uh, options for the actual weave itself. So it's good to check those layers in case you have various different cross sections along with alternate paths. So let's just close that down and so with these cross sections what I can do is look at creating my own so I can edit the vectors if I wanted to to create my own weave and so to do that I'm just going to zoom in here just using the scroller and then I'm going to go into node edit mode and then here I'm just going to look at changing the shape of that if I wanted to I could look at inserting a new point and just to change the vector and tweak that around there see I've got a new shape here and then so if we go and zoom to fit and then if I select all of those and then just deselect my vector cross sections then I could go into the modeling tab we'll just tile our windows first we could go in and use that extrude shape and to use selection and then I'm going to select my cross section here and then we're going to go and apply that so we can see that we're creating our own version of the weaves. And there is a tutorial that shows you how to use the extrude and weave function. Let's just close that. I'm going to go File, Close. I'm not going to save that. I'm going to go back into that folder. And if we go back to the clip art folder, I'm just going to reduce the size of the icons for the time being. And in addition to the panels and weaves, if we go into the ribbons and banners folder, we can see that there are nine CRV 3D folders for those ribbons. And again, these files contain the 3D model as well as the vectors that we use to create them. So let's just take one of those CRV 3D files. So we'll just go and take this one here. I'm just going to drag that in. We'll just minimize that for the time being. And again, if we go into the Layers drop-down, we can see we have a layer called Outline Vectors, and we also have a layer called Sweep Vectors. And again, so you can see how this was constructed, and then you could make your own versions. Now, there is actually a tutorial available showing you how to draw the vectors and how to model a banner. So let's just close that down. And so some of the clip art available with this software is really a lot more than just a 3D model. The Clip Art Guide PDF document will explain exactly which of the files include these vector files. Now I want to look at V3M and 3D clip files, and that accounts for quite a lot of the models available with the software. And so in order to use a 3D clip file or a V3M, we need to create a new session. So I'm just going to close this down, and we're going to go and create a new file. It's just going to make this 12 inches by 12 inches, put the thickness to 1 inch, with a very high modeling resolution, we could go ahead now and press OK. So now I could go and drag or drop V3M or 3D clip files into my job space, or I could use the modeling tab and use the import component or 3D model option, or I could use the clip art tab, and this is where I can easily view an import clip art that's available on my PC. Now I just want to concentrate on the top half of the Clipart tab. You can see that we have a tab here called the Library Browser and we also have a tab here called Local Files. And so the Library Browser allows us to add folders and they will remain in here unless we remove them. 
And so what I've done is I've already installed the clip art that comes with Aspire and then using the add folder option I've browsed through my PC and located the clip art folder that we spoke about earlier and then in there I've added all of the subfolders of my clip art. So if we just cancel that and so here we can see that I've added all of those subfolders and then in the lower half of my clip art tab we can see all of the clip art displayed as a thumbnail in which I could then go and take and either double click to take that into the centre of my job or I could select it and drag that in. We'll get to that shortly. And so every time that I close down a session of Aspire and then reopen a new one, these folders will remain here within my clip art tab. I can just move that down if I wanted to. And so as I said earlier, the only way that we could remove clip art is just by using the remove folder option. That will just take that away. The other option is using the local files tab. And this also allows us to browse through folders that are on our PC so you can see that I've gone into the clip art folder there and again I could just select those and then it will view the piece of clip art in the lower half of the clip art tab. So this is more of a temporary way of accessing clip art. So let's just go back into the library browser and then we'll go and have a look at the animals. And so within the clip art that comes with Aspire there are quite a few Vector Art 3D models and you'll see those displayed as uh, a raised version, a dished version and a recessed version and they all come in both 3D clip and V3M file formats. And So what I can do is just take that piece of clip art and I can just drag that into my session you can see that's displayed there or I could go and double click that and that will automatically put that in the centre if I go to view and tile my windows vertical I can also select a piece of clip art and just drag that straight into the 3D view also. And to help us see those uh, dished and recessed shapes a little bit better let's go into the model option here and we're going to look at adding in a zero plane. We can see those shapes there so we've got our raised our A version, our B version which is the dished version and then our C version which is this sort of faux hand carved recessed version here. So I'll put that back in C and all of these are detailed in the clip art guide. Now some of the files that are available with this software include a dash X in the name and this means that they are saved as a group of individual components and so you could import the file and ungroup it to look at all of the individual pieces. Now depending on the file would depend on how much of it that you'd be able to ungroup back to its original state. And the nice thing about these files is that you can break them down and use them as individual parts. And you can also use them as a learning curve to see how the part was made and put together and organised within the component tree. So let's just take all of these, I'm just going to box select them, to right mouse click, I'm going to use the option to delete them. I'm going to come into the decorative subfolder here and I'm just going to search for a flourish that we could use as a good example. So I'm going to take flourish 101 dash 1, I'm just going to double click that to put that into the center of my part. I'm going to hold down shift and I'm just going to take the corner handle here and I'm just going to make that a little bit bigger. So holding shift just scales that up in proportion for me. So let's just go into the modeling tab and so we can see here that we have this plus sign that's indicating that that's a group. So let's just right mouse click and we're going to use this option here to ungroup so we can see here that we have another group, so we have a plus here, we have another group here, and we have another group over here. And so now I could use these smaller pieces, edit them, or I could delete them. So let's just right mouse click and just delete that group there. And we can see that I have a new design, and so I could go ahead and export this composite model here out as a piece of clip art and then I could access that in my local files at a later date. So let's just go and select everything in our component tree by using shift and I'm just going to right mouse click and use the delete option here. So let's go back into the clip art tab and we can see that we have a subfolder called textures not tileable. So I'm going to select that 
Now I'm just going to choose the larger tile view. You can see I can switch between the large, medium and small. I'm going to use the large tiles for this so I can see those a little bit better. And so we could just take one of those, double click that to put that in place. We could just go and shrink that down. And so once we've zoomed in there, we could just bring that up a little bit so we can see that better in the 3D view. Now these could be added to backgrounds of designs, or we could overlay them on lettering for a more interesting effect. Now as I said earlier, these are non-tileable, but as with all of the other components, they can be stretched, rotated, smoothed and manipulated in order to use them as part of your design. And so that concludes the overview of the clip art files that are included with Aspire.